wood turners come into wood turning with a wide variety of backgrounds. Some, like myself, never used a grind, never owned a grinder, or never used a grinder before they got into wood turning. I've learned a lot about grinders since then. I want to share that with you for for beginners that are looking to uh, get a, a sharpening system or or uh, experienced turners that might be looking at an upgrade. In this video, I'm going to show you my uh, my thoughts on grinders, but I don't have a monopoly on truth, but it's based on my research, my personal experience, and feedback that I've got from other, other wood turners. If you disagree, uh, or if, I, if you uh, feel like I've made a factual uh, error, please leave it in the comments below. I read every comment and I welcome your, your thoughts. Uh, my years as a human resources manager have taught me the more specific the feedback, the more likely it will lead to, to change. And because I've got a thick skin, I don't take it as criticism, I take it as feedback. There are other good sharpening systems out there besides the ones that, ones that are grinder based, but I can't address them because I have no experience with them. They include sanding belt systems such as the one by Robert Sorby and slow speed water wheel systems such as the Tormek and its competitors. They all have their own advantages and disadvantages and, and they have their own proponents and zealots. If you have one and are happy with it, great. One of the advantages of a bench grinder sharpening system is that they're the most common. If you have a mentor, you go to a hands-on workshop or a class at a school like Aramont or John C. Campbell or your, or your local woodworking store, chances are that the grinder is what you will likely have readily available. And folks are familiar with it and they can help you with it. So grinder-based sharpening uh, systems got several components. Firstly, it's, it's got a, a grinder. It's going to have uh, two wheels, generally a coarse wheel and a fine wheel. The coarse wheel might be an aluminum oxide uh, wheel. The downside of aluminum oxide is you've got to dress it, keep it, keep it clean periodically. CBN wheel, uh, that's not necessary. This will change size. This stays permanent. You'll have some type of uh, base mounting system and a sliding arm with a jig that will hold your gouges in order that you can pivot it to get the right, uh, right profile. You'll also have a platform. Now, this is the one-way uh, Wolverine system. A similar system, uh, but with some additional features, is the Kodiak system, which uh, again has has a, has a base, uh, a sliding arm, and a, and a pivoting system for the um, bowl and and spindle gouges, as well as a, a platform. I'll go into more details on on sharpening jigs in a future video, but the uh, I'll just mention the Kodiak's got some additional features that makes it considerably easier to replicate to to uh, be consistent with your grindings and to, and to replicate them. And I think it's worth mentioning, I have two grinders. Uh, a typical wood turner does not need two grinders. Let's start with the issue of grinder size. They're readily available in 6 inch and 8 inch sizes. Both work. If you're starting out with wood turning and have a 6 inch with an aluminum oxide wheel, it'll work just fine. You don't want to use one of those gray carborundum uh, wheels that you might use for uh, sharpening low carbon steel such as your lawnmower blade. First, they tend to clog with metal particles and they tend to overheat high speed steel. They also tend to bounce or vibrate a bit so you won't get a smooth sharp edge. You also have to dress them constantly to keep the surface clean of particles and, uh, and to keep it flat. They're totally unsuitable for the modern tool steel used in turning tools. If you have a 6 inch grinder with a gray carborundum wheel, you'll want to replace it with a suitable aluminum oxide wheel. Other than that, I would think twice before putting more money into a 6 inch wheel uh, since you'd also need to get a, a grinding wheel uh, a dresser. I wouldn't uh, invest in a fancy bushing system or balancing systems. You might not even want to invest in a new wheel. I would definitely recommend against investing in a CBN or cubic boron nitride wheel for a 6 inch grinder. I would suggest saving your money for upgrading to a slow speed 8 inch grinder when you can afford it. The 6 inch creates a more cute concave on grinding your tools. It's not a big deal, but it's not as desirable as the less acute concave profile you'll get with an 8 inch uh, uh, grinding wheel. Now let's talk about speed. Grinders tend to come in two speeds, 1725 revolutions per minute, which is considered a slow speed grinder, and 3450 RPM, which is considered a high speed grinder. Many grinder users, other than wood turners, are interested in grinding metal and want to hog it off as fast as they can. That's why they buy a, a high speed grinder. Some are variable speed. 
My opinion is that variable speeds are a waste of money for wood turners. I started with a 6 inch variable speed delta and the electronics burned up. I could not get replacement parts and one had to be an electrical engineer or electronics technician to fix it. I'm not either so I had to junk it and buy a replacement, which in hindsight may, may have been a good thing since it pushed me to upgrade to an 8 inch, uh, eight inch wheel. Looking at this chart, we can see that uh, 1725 or possibly 1750 on some uh, grinders, the variations are not significant. If buying an 8 inch, I would get a slow speed because they're a bit easier to use to get the grind you want. If you're experienced with a grinder, it might not make any difference. For those of you new to wood turning, you may not realize that modern turning tools are made of specially hardened high-speed steel unlike the carbon tool steels that you find in flat work tools like bench chisels, carving knives, plane blades, and, and so on. Or perhaps some old wood turning tools that you inherited from a relative who was turning 30 years ago. It's almost impossible to ruin the temper or hardness of modern wood turning tool edges on the grinder. You can blue the edge of high-speed steel tools, but they won't change the temper. But if you're grinding high carbon uh, steel tools like wood turning chisels and plane blades on a stone wheel uh, or even a CBN wheel, you can overheat them which will turn the edge blue and ruin the temper. The slower speed is definitely safer to use. Most 6 inch grinders I've seen tend to be high speed and at 3450 are about one and a half times faster than the slow speed 8 inch ones. This means it's harder to control the edge you want and it creates more heat. Grinders are typically, typically, uh, or six inch grinders typically come with a three quarter inch stone wheel compared to the wider one inch stone wheel that come with a typical eight inch grinder. That makes it for less real estate to sharpen, sharpen on and therefore more difficult. Let's talk about some quality factors. My Woodcraft is a one half horsepower and no longer sold. The Woodcraft grinder was a very popular grinder some years back until Woodcraft changed manufacturers or the manufacturer cut corners and Woodcraft had a very large batch that overheated and they did a, finally did a recall. After that, they quit selling their house brand and they started carrying Rikon. I've gotten in the habit of just kind of giving my wheel a, a spin uh, with my half horsepower grinder before I flip the switch. Um, it's really not necessary any more than it is uh, snapping your fingers to keep pink elephants away, but it's something I've gotten the habit of. These aluminum hubs are not that, uh, are certainly, certainly manageable uh, with these CB, two CBN wheels for this half, half horsepower to handle it. Look at the warranty uh, uh, time frame. Is it five, inch, uh, five years or is it two years such as the, the wind? Or is it 90, degree, uh, 90 days such as the Harbor Freight? Do not be tempted to buy a cheap uh, grinder from, uh, from the likes of Harbor Freight. It'll probably have poor quality bearings and likely to have some run out uh, leading to vibration. There'll always be a shorter 90 day warranty compared to the typical five year warranty on quality grinders. Most new grinders with aluminum oxide wheels uh, typically come with a 60 grit and a 120 grit wheel. It's what most of us started with. And all aluminum oxide wheels aren't the same. The cheaper grinders come with a cheap aluminum oxide wheel that's too hard and it's not friable. A friable wheel is one that where the, the stone breaks down with use, exposing sharper grits. It's cheaper to make a hard aluminum oxide wheel uh, that is less friable. Let's talk about features. Horsepower. A typical 6 inch grinder is 2.1 amps. The Rikon half horsepower is 3 amps. The Rikon 1 horsepower is 7 amps. Woodturner's Wonders uh, grinder is a 3 quarter horsepower, 4.8 amps, and comes with a high quality light uh, with an 18 inch flex arm. I understand that this is made in the same factory as the, the Rikon grinders. Okay, this is just a quick demo of the difference between a half a horsepower and a 1 horsepower on the startup speed. The half horsepower certainly run the wheel just perfectly fine. But the one horsepower really starts up faster, as Ken will demonstrate, turn them on simul simultaneously. So the one on the right is 
is there. One on the left is almost there. No, and you had you had the second you, you, in one of your videos. You said one was X number of seconds. One was two seconds, and one was That's seven to ten seconds, depending on which wheels are on it. Yeah. So the one half horsepower is great if you're really doing heavy grinding, but uh, but it's it's not really needed for for your typical wood wood turner. But it starts up faster, so if that seven to nine additional seconds startup speed makes a difference for a production turner, that's that'd be something to look at. Should you buy a one half horsepower grinder or should you buy larger? Well, it depends. If you watch the video on startup times, it's pretty evident that the one horsepower is readily is ready to go in two seconds. A half horsepower takes seven to ten seconds, depending on the wheels being used. The three quarter horsepower wood uh, wood turner's wonders grinder is somewhat in the middle at about maybe four to five seconds. All three machines will get the job done when used with CBN wheels because little pressure is needed because the wheels cut so well. If you do a lot of heavy production grinding then it might be wise to get a three quarter or one horsepower for a faster startup. For me I found my one half horsepower grinders uh, and I have two of them are fully adequate for my sharpening needs. But that faster startup time would be nice. Variable speed I've, I've touched on. Uh, if, you, if you have one, fine, but don't. Uh, I wouldn't recommend buying one. Some grinders come with a light. Most are useless as they're too short a neck or they won't stay in position. I think the new house brand from Woodturner's Wonders is an exception as it seems to come with a much better, better light with a longer uh, neck on it than most. Most grinders come with small platforms that are generally not usable for turning tools because they're too small and not readily adjustable to ride the bevel on the wheel. I'm working on a future video on sharpening jigs and another video on CBN wheels so I'll be bringing those to you soon. I've been using Woodturner Wonders products for a number of years. Very pleased with their products and services I know you'll be. I'm now a Wood Turning Wonders affiliate, so if you'll check out the links in the show notes in the description area, I'd appreciate it. Uh, if you buy something using those links, I'll get a small commission, and that helps me to continue to bring these Wood Turning tutorial videos to you. Y'all remember, stay safe and come on back here.